Good evening to our viewing audience. Welcome to another edition of Bring the World Home, a production of the Return Peace Corps Volunteers of Hawaii. Each week we explore the experiences and opportunities that volunteerism provides to Peace Corps volunteers from around the world in the 132 countries that the Peace Corps currently serves. Today we have with us Jesus Puerto. Jesus, welcome to Bring the World Home. Thank you, Chip. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for taking here. time out of your busy schedule to join us. Uh, Senor Puerto is a uh, owner, founder, operator of a great restaurant here in uh, Honolulu, Sol de Cuba. But uh, in a previous life, you were a Peace Corps volunteer. You uh, served in one of the nicest places in the South Pacific. Uh, we're here in Hawaii, and uh, Jose, uh, Jesus was down in Western Samoa in the capital of Apia, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He served from 1998 to 2000 as a Peace Corps volunteer. Yep. Again, we, uh, we've had a number of people on from uh, who have served in Samoa and uh, Samoa. Mm -hmm. We hope that uh, uh, our viewers can appreciate the the service that you did there because it's a bit unique. You started off, as you told me, as a uh, in community development work. We'll explore that a little bit. And then you, uh, after 2000, you uh, returned to Samoa as a uh, worker with a UN volunteer organization, not volunteer, but a UN organization. And we'd like to explore that aspect as, as well. Um, but first, tell me how, uh, uh, how did you come to Peace Corps? How did you find out about the Peace Corps and what made you want to participate in Peace Corps service? In 1993, I um, had come down with uh, spinal meningitis. Oh. Right. Um, and um, the doctors had given uh, me a few hours uh, to live. They didn't tell me, they told my mother. I learned oh my weeks gosh. later. And um, after surviving that, uh, coming out of that, I um, just developed a, a different outlook on life. Uh -huh. um, I wanted to to explore and learn more than you know I had ever seen um, in the surroundings that I grew up in, yes. which was in Tampa, Florida. Okay. Uh, that's where I'm originally from. We come from <coughs> um, an old Cuban community in Tampa. Uh, my great-grandfather came from um, Cuba about 100 years ago. And uh, my family still lives there, mm -hmm. you know, but um, Anyways, I, I saw, um, I had it in, an interest a, to, to explore, you know, outside of my, my home sure. surroundings. And uh, uh, Peace Corps seemed to be about, you know, the, the way to both explore the world outside of, of, of where I came from, but also uh, an opportunity to serve. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I pursued my education, my uh, a bachelor's degree in international relations, um, and I, I applied to be a volunteer. Do you remember how you heard about the Peace Corps? I, I had heard about it as uh, you know since I since I was a child. Um, I, I'd always um, admired uh, President John F. Kennedy's um, his work, um, his support of the civil rights movement. Right. Um, as a as a as a elementary school student, I did my book reports on on him and on Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. um, when I, uh, his birthday was the same day, is uh, same day as my birthday, May oh. 29th, and, and also my mother's birthday. <laughs> so he's always, there's always been some, uh, uh, he's always inspired me for, for you know, as a, as yes. a great person. Um, yeah. And uh, so that's how I first learned of the Peace Corps. While attending school at the University of Tampa, um, I saw a, um, a flyer on the bulletin board and um, I that same week I had just uh, began taking African history classes okay and uh, I had learned uh, some things about African history that I had never learned before mm -hmm. in high school and right away I thought I'm missing out on a lot yeah. I realized I said you know there's got to be a way for me to get out there to you know into the world and and um, and 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 you know, get a hold of some enlightenment here. You know, uh -huh. yeah, so um, and and then there was that that sign that, that on the on the on the 
bulletin board. That sounds like my background. When I was in college, I saw the recruitment poster and yeah. I said, I'm missing out here. Yeah. I could be going to, they were rec trying to recruit for Micronesia. Okay. And um, I said, gee, this is fantastic. This is, I had never really thought about it before, but the, the idea of uh, Kennedy's words echoing in my mind, mm -hmm. maybe the same thing, kind of a new lease on life. Yeah. Uh, I saw it as an opportunity. Um, so you were stimulated? I was stimulated. I had already <coughs> worked in corporate America. I had worked for Eastern Airlines. I was in sales uh, uh, until about 1991, and they went under. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, you know, I, I had, that was right out of high school. I, you know, I, I, I really f felt my calling wasn't to go back and, uh, and, and pursue a, a long-term career in corporate America at that uh -huh. time. Right. You know, uh, something drew me to, uh, to, to explore l learnings in, in, in non-traditional ways, and that's what Peace Corps offered. Yeah. You know. How did that, the idea of service dovetail with your uh, community, your com Cuban community in, in Florida? Well, it, it um, Tampa has the, you know, it's the oldest, that's where you'll find the oldest Cuban community. That's, that's uh, but I most of, it, yeah, most of it assimilated. We, we come from a small, uh, what, what is now a historic district called Ybor City. And that's where the cigar industry first developed in the U.S. But uh, uh, most of the folks there, have have dispersed out into the suburbs and things, and um, um, no, uh, it was, uh, you know, my, my my parents and my family. We didn't we don't you know I didn't come from a family of great means, so for in fact I, I in my father's family I'm the first to to earn a bachelor's degree, and in um, in my mother's family the you know the second my mother was the first, so Beautiful. in 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 our you know in my family's eyes you know if you if you reach this level of higher learning, you know, the next uh, uh, logical step for them would be then to go and get a job to help pay those loans <laughs> and help sure. pay them back, sure. you know, and, 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 you know, have a family and, and, and you know, mm -hmm. continue building your foundation in that way. Uh, so it was a, it was a stretch for them to, to accept uh, You're going you know, into me the going Peace into the Peace Corps, yes. Uh -huh. um, and uh, you know it was it was hard for them to understand, but uh, I I had to I couldn't walk away from my my instinct, yeah. you know the calling, you know I couldn't. Yeah. Uh, I I I always I have this uh, technique that I do. I like to look uh, to um, I guess into the future uh, until unt you know into well I'm into my seventies or eighties or uh, and and say you know. As I'm there, I, I then turn and I look back, and I don't want to have any would haves. Wish I had, no you know, no regrets. You yeah. Know. So, uh, so you know, I, I, I cultivated my or, or made my life uh, available so that I could walk away from it and join the Peace Corps. It wasn't easy. It took some years to do that. I was 30 years old. Uh, when I when I actually went to service, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I had bills, you know, to pay. I had sure. credit cards. I had things, you know, uh, but I, um, you know, I was able to defer my school loans as a Peace Corps volunteer. You know, you can defer your school uh, loans during service. Right. You know, so, mm -hmm. um, you know, there was uh, there was some logistical issues, but I, I, I managed to take care of everything and and and, and go on. To be able to follow your heart, you did a lot of juggling, but it's lots, yeah. Um, I'm sure that that primed you as a as a wonderful volunteer because uh, your the passions there were uh, again I can contrast just hearing you talk uh, when I went in the Peace Corps I wasn't really passionate about it I became passionate it's, it's as a commercial say it was a, gra a job that grew on me um, for you it sounds like it was you had to make a lot of sacrifice to be able to realize this this dream that was changed that was had changed you after your survival of meningitis you changed your outlook and brought you to a point where service was important and and um, working with other people and learning about some other culture uh, you said you had gone into African studies How, were you 
did you choose to go to Samoa or you no. were invited? <laughs> yeah. Did you even know anything about Samoa? Well, going back to my, uh, uh, my invitation, I received my invitation. It arrived in the mail um, June the 3rd, 1998. It was dated uh, May 29th, my birthday. Ah, which uh -huh. is also again Kennedy's birthday and my mother's birthday. So the the universe was aligning itself, and I and I yes. and and, and uh, which which gave me more confident uh, confidence about my my decision. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I I focused on um, uh, the 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 next day after receiving. I'm sorry, after receiving the uh, the invitation, then you get your assignment. You know, two or three days later, and the assignment was uh, was to Western Samoa, and I thought. Where in the world is Western Samoa? I'd never heard of it. Yeah. And so right away went online. Uh, and again, I mean, you know, for me, this was about uh, going and experiencing things and, and, sure. and, and seeing what I could learn, you know, uh, from, from other places, other peoples, other cultures, as well as, as, as you know, my work experience as, as a, you know, working in sales. I had owned my own cigar company before I helped to supplement my, my income in college by uh, uh, selling cigars to local uh, restaurants and, and, and hotels in Miami Beach. Um, I went to Florida International University, which is in Miami, Florida. Um, so I, I wanted to, you know, I thought, well, I can take this, these skills that I have, yeah. you know, these bus the business development, the corporate, the sales skills, um, and, and apply those wherever I go, you mm -hmm. know. So that's, that's, that's what I'll bring to the table, you know, right. as well as my American values, you know. Right. Um, and, um, so when, when I got the, the, the assignment to Samoa, uh, I, I, I looked it up on the internet and I thought, well, this is gonna be exciting. I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> 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 and I uh, called the Peace Corps and I said, well, you know, I don't know much about Samoa. Are you sure this is the right thing for me? And she's, you know, and they said, you know, if you, if, if you don't take this one, we don't know when the next assignment's going to come up. It may uh -huh. be another year. <laughs> and I said, all right, well, then I'm going, you know. And uh -huh. uh, within four weeks, I was, I was off, you know. Uh, yeah. Had our staging in San Francisco, California. I was living in, uh, in Tampa at the time, or in Miami at the time. So flew over to San Fran and met the other folks that were, mm -hmm. you know, would travel over to Samoa with me. And, uh, you know, by July, that was June, by July, first week of July, 1998, we were in country, you know, and uh, did 10 weeks of training mm -hmm. in, a, in a village in, uh, uh, on the island of Upolu in Samoa called Satui Malufi Lufi. And, you know, hello to everyone out there at Satui. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Talofa. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, we learned, uh, you know, uh, the language, uh, cultural protocols, mm -hmm. um, and uh, insight about the, the jobs that, that, that we would work in for the next two years. Yeah. And, your, and so your assignment, you said, was community development initially? Was yeah, in my, uh, my um, realm uh, of community development. My title that was Peace Corps gave me, uh, you know, because I had skills and experiences in different areas. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I was a generalist. Uh, so did you find that that, that, <laughs> that title uh, really defined the reality once you got there? Did, you, did anybody know what you were going to be doing, including yourself? No. E exact, <laughs> know exactly <laughs> what you were going to be doing? Yeah, no, uh, you know, that's, that's, well, that's part of the, the opportunity of being a great volunteer. Right. You know, uh, that's, uh, you, you take those uh, what appear to be challenges and uh, and you turn them into opportunities of greatness, you know, and mm -hmm. and, and and yeah, no, we didn't. It it, I, it was very. It, it it it's hard. It's hard for Peace Corps headquarters. It's hard for, uh, you know, I've I've been a desk officer. I was a desk officer after my service as a volunteer and after doing the UN work. I was a desk officer for Central America and uh, for the Caribbean for Peace Corps in in Washington. And and I understand the challenges that, that there mm -hmm. there are uh, on on the desk and. Uh, and the other d various departments to develop and uh, um, specific details for volunteers. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so di but for our audience, did you have any inkling of where to start? Mm. You know, you, you arrived there, you uh, had a place to stay, uh, maybe you didn't, maybe you had to find your own place, but when did you get down to work, so to speak, or how did you figure out what getting down to work was actually going to entail? Well, about uh, I, w about eight weeks after arriving, 
uh, about eight weeks after arriving, I, I met the, the person that would be uh, my, my pule, uh, my boss there in Samoa. And uh, he was the director of the, the Methodist Church Youth Department, the Samoan Methodist Church Youth Department. Okay. And uh, uh, my assignment was, uh, was his assistant. Uh, and uh, when I was uh, assigned to develop secular, assist in developing secular programs uh, for, for the youth. Okay. And uh, w looking back, uh, some of the work that we did, uh, I, I don't know anything about farming, but I helped to promote and develop and promote a, a compost uh, uh, development program mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and distribute that program throughout the villages of both Polu and uh, Savai'i. Uh, Savai'i is the other, the other island uh, of Western Samoa. Right. And I um, did a, a, a music program. I partnered uh, with a local music school and then we brought our, uh, uh, the youth who, who are assigned to different, as youth leaders in uh, different villages, we'd bring them in and, uh, and do the music programs mm -hmm. uh, in town. Um, we, um, uh, I, I uh, helped to start a, um, a small reach research center, uh, bringing in uh, resources such as uh, computers, books, and things. Um, a secondary assignment was uh, I was asked by the Associate Peace Corps Director, uh, Kilali Alailima, uh, to uh, assist with the development of Habitat for Humanity in Samoa. Uh, it had, there was, Habitat for Humanity, as you know, is a, a, a program that does, uh, yes. builds houses for uh, low-income families around mm -hmm. the world, um, and there hadn't been a had Habitat program in Samoa. So we had to, she asked me to help mobilize volunteers, <coughs> um, gather resources, help to liaise with the Habitat International people, um, and uh, build the infrastructure of, of the organization. And that took us uh, some years. It took uh, some years before we could build the house mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and explain you know, to the community what the program was about what, and, and how it could benefit. And also to make the, the program locally appropriate. You know, that was, uh, that's what, what uh, we did as, as, a, as a board and as volunteers. Um, so eventually I'd go on, it f finished my, in my Peace Corps the service at the end of uh, uh, 2000 and uh, was asked to return and did a, with the UN, uh, did the UN volunteer assignment where I was then now s assigned to the Habitat for Humanity program, but this time as a full-time position rather than the uh, part-time, the secondary position. Yeah. Must <coughs> well, that's indicative of how successful you must have been as a Peace Corps volunteer. Um, before we get into exploring that UN aspect of your time there, I'd like to come back to the Peace Corps uh, service, <coughs> did you um, did you feel like like you were serving American interests very well, or how uh, in, in the way that maybe you had preconceived it w before you arrived there? No, uh, I think no, no question. I mean, anytime uh -huh. uh, as an American, anytime you you cross the the borders in and and have your stamp your passport stamped. Uh, upon entry into another country, I think we have a responsibility to to carry our our <coughs> our, our values and uh, but not impose them upon anyone, but to 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 carry them respectfully. Uh, but also in in sight of of receiving and learning and respecting uh, what the other culture, our, our host culture, has to offer us. Mm -hmm. uh, so. You know, as a, as a volunteer, just by being there, just just by being in Samoa and uh, uh, being yourself, uh, you know, we're 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 doing a service both not just to to the host country mm -hmm. uh, and our counterparts there, but also to ourselves, and then further back to our families and our communities back in the countries uh, or in 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 America, in the United States, exactly. because when we go back. What do we do? We take the stories and we share our experiences, and which then allows for for you know our friends and family at home uh, who hadn't had the, the same experience and may never have the opportunity, yeah. you know, to to sort of Understand. open their 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 minds to these different ideas and and that you know 
outside of the U.S. Not everyone uh, is as challenged as sometimes the television shows us. You know, challenged e economically the challenged. Uh, right. Uh, they're living a pretty darn good life. They're living a wonderful, even though wonderful, it's not the American life. life. Yeah, absolutely. American absolutely. life is, yeah. and perhaps that's one aspect of bringing the world home to America. Yeah, absolutely. Is that you know, ours is not the only way, and I think that we're, I'll editorialize a little bit, I think we're moving more towards the realization that, uh, I'll, that other cultures and other ways of life are just as pertinent and valuable, yeah. and, uh, and we can learn from them. Absolutely. And it's in our best interest, interest to learn from them. It is in our best interest. In the five minutes or so that we have left, I'd like to talk a little bit about <coughs> Uh, first of all, did the uh, uh, you feel like the people there in Samoa appreciated what you did, what you were doing there during your time? I hope so. <laughs> I, I, I don't yeah. mean appreciate in yeah. the sense of of actually, uh, you know, your day to day things, but yeah. appreciated Probably your presence there. I guess n n <coughs> they not as much as I pre appreciated the experience. And never and never will be as much as I appreciated the experience and and what I learned and what I learned about myself, what they helped me to understand and such see about what? myself. Yeah. Such as, um, if you're willing to. Well, share. something as simple as uh, as my own culture. You know, uh, I'm a person of uh, African heritage, Hispanic heritage. Uh, so you, I just did the Af uh, DNA testing. I have, you know, European ancestry, a African ancestry, Asian ancestry, uh, a lot of, you know, obviously, you know, and we all do, you know, mm -hmm. to some degree. Uh, but, y you know, we don't always, we, we kind of take those things for granted, especially as, I guess, as Americans, uh, because we, we have so much going on, you know, in our lives. But, you know, being immersed in a culture where uh, seeing this on a on a regular basis, you know, people ain't, uh, ways their 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 traditional ways, uh, uh, not act part of the history, but actually happening still today, mm -hmm. you know, helps you to 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 think. Well, well, you know, were my people doing this as well? You know, yeah. or were they doing something similar to it? And the answer is is yes. I mean, let's look at look at um, what I call pig cooking technology. You know. Uh, here in the Pacific, the technology to prepare a pig or a, ro a pork or a right. lot, you know, for ceremonies is using an earthen oven in the ground, yeah. you know, and we'll find that as well in Central America. We'll f we did it, and we did it, and we do it till today, you know, it's done in Cuba, you know, and it's done in many places around the world. Exactly. And this was started long before there was internet and you know, there weren't any memos going out as to how to, <laughs> you know, how to, how to, how, how to do this. So we were, right. we were sharing as a people for, you know, we have been across, you know, sharing as a people for a very long time. Exactly. Uh, far be be before the, the colonial times, eh? And uh, uh, so that, just by looking at something I think as simple as that, uh, we can, uh, we can find that uh, possibly we're all related. And if we if yeah. and if we find that you know there's those <laughs> familiar ways, then we might be family. And if we're family, then we don't need to fight as much, right? <laughs> God, I hope that lesson sinks in <laughs> deeper and wider. Uh, again, just uh, in the couple of minutes that we have left, do you find ways that you're still bringing your experience to to the forefront of your daily life? Rook? Quickly, can you think of anything that, that that springs to mind in that vein? Yes, sure. How, sure. how your Peace Corps experience is still influencing you all these years later? You know, I've, I've talked a lot, I think, about um, um, the, um, I guess, the altruistic work of, of Peace Corps, but on a, on a technical uh, level and on a skills level, um, the things that I learned as executive director for Habitat for Humanity, the organizational development, writing an operations manual, 
training staff and volunteers. If I didn't know how to do that, I, I, don't, I don't think I'd be as, uh, I hate to say successful, because to me, longev longev in the restaurant business, longevity is success. But I have two restaurants open in less than, than, you know, less than three years. Uh, one in Connecticut, New Haven, and uh, the other one here in Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh -huh. We're developing a franchise program. We'll do global expansion uh, of our restaurant. Uh, and we, you know, I, I have a food product line uh, that uh, that we've recently got into the commissary system here in Hawaii. That's fantastic. All of that organizing, you know. All because of Peace Corps? B because of my Peace Corps service, yeah. Jesus Puerto, thank you very, very much for thank being with us today. Thank you very much, Thanks for the opportunity. It went very fast, yeah. much too fast. Yeah. Hope we can explore some of your uh, subsequent work. To our viewers, we thank you again for being here with us for another edition of Bring the World Home. You can explore the idea of Peace Corps, the website listed on your screen. You can go to the phone book and find out about Peace Corps. Or you can go to Sol de Cubo restaurant in Honolulu and ask to talk to Jesus. Absolutely. In person. Thank yeah. you again for joining us tonight. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs>